and the bolts and pump impeller. When the pump impeller is loose, remove the bolts. Then remove bolts between volute casing and cargo leg. Change two of the bolts with lowering, lifting bolts. One bolt in each leg. Remove rest of the bolts on cargo flange and also between volute casing and bearing housing. Finally, the volute casing, suction cover and pump impeller is now hanging in the lowering, lifting bolts, diagonally positioned on each cargo leg. To avoid damage on the tank top, use plastic strips when sliding out the unit. Lower the whole unit down carefully Turn the lowering, lifting bolts in parallel. Slide the unit out of the well. Remove the upper wear ring and inspect it carefully. Remove the seal element and the O-ring between impeller and impeller hub. This is normally parts fit for further use, but have to be controlled and clean before assembling. The next step is to turn the unit upside down. The suction cover and the impeller can now be dismantled and the parts can be inspected. Pay special attention to the wearings. Normal radial clearances when new are approximately 0.2 millimeters. We recommend to change the wearing if the radial clearance is more than approximately one millimeter. Loosen the locking bracket and remove the locking ring. Use the suction bell mouth to lift out the suction cover. And finally, lift up the pump impeller. Changing of wearings is a service job normally done by the crew on board. How frequently depends primarily on type of cargo. Some ships discharging cargo with a lot of sediment may have to do this job several times per year, while others carrying only clean oil products may run for five to 10 years before doing any service work on the cargo pump. Sequence number two, dismantling of double cargo lip seal and cofferdam seal. First, dismantle lower part of cofferdam check pipe. Then dismantle the impeller hub from the pump's shaft. For demonstration, we are here using a mirror showing how to loosen the lock washer, remove the bolt and pull out the impeller hub. Impeller hub is pulled out by using extractor from Framo toolbox.
Be very careful not to damage O-rings and ceramic sleeve. Install assembling cylinder to keep the ceramic sleeve in place and to protect the sensitive lips on the lip seals. Pull down the sealed ring housing with cargo seal. The Teflon seal element is sometimes hanging on the bearing housing and must be removed and controlled. Dismantle the cargo seal. Inspect the parts and change if necessary. Framo single cargo seal must also be dismantled. Changing of cargo seals is also a normal service job on typical wear and tear parts, normally done by the crew on board. We recommend to change both the single and double cargo seal together and they are now delivered as one spare part. Take away the assembling cylinder and pull out the ceramic sleeve and check the parts carefully. The ceramic sleeve must be handled very carefully as it is brittle and may crack if dropped or mishandled. If necessary, it is also possible to change all rotating parts in the cargo pump when the pump unit is still hanging on the pipe stack. Sequence number three, dismantling of mechanical oil seal or other remaining rotating parts in the cargo pump. The mechanical seal can be dismantled without draining the hydraulic oil from the pump stack. The easiest way to dismantle the mechanical seal is first to remove the bearing housing from the pump casing. When the unit is dismantled, Turn it upside down and remove the upper seal ring housing and then the stationary parts of the mechanical seal. Use two lifting bolts to take out the mechanical seal. Carefully control the stationary part of the mechanical seal and the Teflon seal element. Pull out rotating part of mechanical seal by using the special tool from Framo Toolbox. Pay special attention when twisting on the tool for lifting out the seal's rotating parts. Control the seal face carefully. If the seal faces are destroyed, fretting or grooves in the surface, they normally can be reconditioned. Remember, never use grease on the o-ring on the station receipt. Use soapy water. If it should be necessary sometime in the future to dismantle the pump shaft, ball bearings and backstop unit, this can easily be done by following the instruction in the service manual. The same applies for the hydraulic motor, but remember before dismantling the hydraulic motor, you have to drain the hydraulic oil from the pump stack. To reduce oil spill to a minimum, use the small air-driven drain pump delivered by Framo. Then lower the hydraulic motor by using a Framo jack and the cargo pump is now dismantled completely. Sequence number four, assembling sequence. All assembling has to be done in reversed way according to the dismantling procedure. On this pump design, we will ask you to pay special attention to the ceramic sleeve and to the cargo seals. The ceramic sleeve is equal in either ends. To increase lifetime, the sleeve can be turned 180 degrees the double cargo lip seal must also be installed correctly. On this cargo pump, the two springs on the double cargo lip seal are equal. 
No spring with red marking, but the groove on the seal must be facing down towards the pump impeller. Check all seal elements, seal grooves and seal faces carefully. Pay special attention to the Teflon rings and be absolutely sure of no deformation. Never install a damaged O-ring and be sure of no corrosion, cracks, dirt, etc. And remember, use only genuine spare parts. Also pay attention how to fit the retainer ring in right position, at the end of the ceramic sleeve and in position on the splained shaft. Sequence number five, pressure testing, test running. After the assembling job is finished, visual check the cargo pump and the cargo tank. No rags or other components must be left in the cargo tank. Pressure test the cargo pump's cofferdam with the three bar pressure. The cofferdam must be pressure tested by blinding off the cofferdam vent pipe. Unscrew the complete air relief valve and connect a pressure gauge to the connection. Connect the air nitrogen connection on top cover plate. Increase the pressure to maximum three bar and control that the pressure is stable for approximately 30 minutes. Test run the cargo pump, purge the cofferdam and check that everything is okay. If the hydraulic oil in the cargo pump has been drained during the service job, de-aerate the pump stack through the air venting plug on deck before test running. By following these instructions, you will achieve a long-lasting, well-functioning cargo pumping system and a happy ship for the crew members as well as for the owner.